Hey guys, aloha, welcome to episode 177 of the Tiggy Maximus Talks. I'm your podcaster host, Tiggy Maximus. Uh, Thank you guys for following the podcast, Um, subscribing, listening to the episodes on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, thank you for doing that guys also donating to the podcast if you haven't already there is a link on my Spotify episodes where you can donate if you click on it and donate whatever um, amount that you guys want that was appreciated uh, also if you're on my YouTube episode there is a link that you just simply um Click or copy and paste. It will take you to the episodes. Each of the episodes, they all have a link to help you guys donate to the podcast if you like. Anything is appreciated, guys. I always appreciate the support. Uh, remember to tell your friends and family and everyone in between. Um, help you guys get inspired by these episodes to think about food if you guys are hungry know more about sports what's going on um also uh just you know see what's going on with comedy as well see what's good out there if you guys want to go to a show i am always up for recommendations and i can tell you who's up um on this episode I want to talk about some predictions for tonight's big event, UFC 300, uh, 302, UFC 302. Uh, This is going to be a big card. You got the main event. You got Islam Makachev going against title challenger once again, Dustin Poirier. So... They're fighting for the lightweight championship. Their champion, Islam Makachev, so technically has not, um, I guess he has had some loss in the UFC. <laughs> um, Dustin Poirier, this is his, basically his last shot. Um, if he doesn't win the title tonight, I don't think he would ever be champion at lightweight 155 pounds. Um, but honestly, um, I like this fight. It can go, it can kind of go two ways. So I can imagine that Islam is going to win. He's going to finish Dustin Poirier by either knockout or submission. Uh, There will be a finish. The other thing is, Dustin Poirier, I think, has to find a way, find some hole in the game of uh, Angela Makachev, exploit it, and try to finish off uh, Angela Makachev. I don't believe this is going to go five rounds. Uh, there will be a finish, but I am picking Angela Makachev to win by finish and retain his lightweight championship and see what happens um, who his next challenger might be, either for a uh, super fight to you know to go, either to get two titles, double champ, or um, or find another contender, which I'm pretty sure they will. I'm thinking somebody might have to come up. (laughs) Or somebody has to come down. Meet Islam at 155. Challenge him for his title. Uh, So I'm picking Islam Makachev for that fight. Um, I'm also going to go with... So we have Sean Strickland and Paulo Costa. Um, Both are very... Very good with striking. Um, it's just that if Paulo Costa hits you, I think it's 
probably get enough to knock somebody out. Uh, Sean Strickland, I think he just comes at you. He doesn't take a rest. His cardio is pretty good, and he puts up high volumes of striking. So, um, but I'm picking Sean Sean Strickland to be Paulo Costa in that one. It will then put Sean Strickland back on the map. Um, challenge for the title. Possibly whoever wins between is Israel Adesanya and um, Dreykus Duplicis DDP. <laughs> so the wild card about that is uh, Chamayev and Robert Whitaker are going to be fighting in three weeks. And that's also a uh, number one contender's potential match. And if Chemayev and Sean Strickland, they both win, they both have a way of challenging whoever comes out of Israel Adesanya and Duplicis. So that 185 pound championship in the middleweight division, that is a... Uh, an interesting um, top eight in there, um, top ten. Interesting to see how that's going to go. A lot of great matchups you can make, but in this one, Sean Strickland is going to come out the winner. He will probably, um, probably be Paulo Costa by. By striking, um, probably a TKO. Um, so, uh, I believe next we have, uh, let's see, is it Alex Morono going up against Nico Price? That one could technically go either way. Uh, I think Nico Price. Um, it was coming off of a loss, I believe. Um, Alex Morono, I think he was. He might have lost his last fight. But honestly, I'm thinking that uh, Morono will beat Nico Price. Uh, another one we have is Kevin Holland going against Oleg. She shook. Um, I'm thinking that Oleki Oleki shook. I think he beats Kevin Holland, probably by a decision. Then, um. We have a fight between Zalski Dos Santos and uh, Zalski Dos Santos. He's fighting Randy Brown. I think that was going to be a good fight. Um. It could go either way, um, but I do like Zowski Dos Santos to win this one. Um, Randy Brown, I was a fan of his, but I kind of noticed he hasn't been um, hasn't been that sharp. Lately in his fights, he might have won a few, but I do remember him losing a few in the in the same time span. So I think he's probably maybe lost a step. Um, but I am gonna pick Zalski Dos Santos to be Randy Brown. Um, there is one fight on the prelim I'm very excited about. It's uh, Jalton Almeida. 
he is going up against Romanov. Romanov was on his way up, and then he got derailed and finally picked up his first few losses at heavyweight in the UFC. Um, it just kind of shows that uh, when you peak, you peak. Um, Johnson Almeida, he was basically one just one fight away from fighting for the heavyweight championship. He had Curtis Blades beat in his last fight. Kept taking him down. And then Curtis Blades only had one thing to do. He was the one able to do one thing. And that was to keep elbowing the head of Johnson Almeida. So what's interesting about that is that had Johnson Almeida had gone away from those elbows he could probably still win the way that he was doing it but because he didn't switch up or anything and he ended up um, just taking a lot of elbows to the head since he had um, he had basically Curtis Blaze in that um Curtis Blades in that takedown position, and honestly, he can't actually seem to get out of it. So, honestly, like, I was just thinking that, um, Johnson was so close. Honestly, because, like, the way things were going, I would think that he was probably going to end up being, like, the heavyweight champion at some point. But, what was interesting was that he then exposed himself head was exposed and all of a sudden his title shot went away so Johnson Almeida does kind of have to climb back up um, the ladder he might have to fight somebody in the top 10 top 5 and then start making his way back to title contention um, honestly, I was kind of thinking that Almeida was probably going to probably fight Tom Aspinall, um, like in a fight or two, uh, and challenge for that heavyweight championship, but we still got Bones Jones at the top of the heap, the top of the mountain of the heavyweight. Um, Tom Aspinall is the interim champion. They're not going to fight um, too soon. They'll probably fight each other maybe maybe by the end of this year. Early next year, 2025. But in the meantime, uh, Bones Jones, he does want to wait for that fight with Stipe Miocic. Um, there is a Dark Horse wall card chance that, um, Perea might challenge Tom Aspinall or Bones Jones, <laughs> try to become a two, uh, two belt champ, but, um, we'll see, um, uh, Well, yeah, Almeida, Almeida going up against Romanov. That one, I do feel that Almeida should win this one and will be on his way back up. And then we'll challenge somebody in the top 10, top 5, and uh, make his way back. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe try to rematch with Curtis Plate. Or if they deem it that they want like a fresh matchup, Almeida might get that call to challenge for the number one contender spot or simply step in and challenge for the title. So, uh, but yeah, those are my picks, guys. I'm picking six fights. Uh, Islam Makachev to retain his lightweight championship over Dustin Poirier. 
Sean Strickland will beat Paul Acosta in the co-main event and will have um, a legitimate case to be the number one contender for the middleweight championship. Um, Oleki Shik uh, should beat Kevin Holland tonight. Um, Alex Morono should defeat Nico Price. Um, Zalski Dos Santos should beat Randy Brown. And my other pick, Jason Almeida, should beat Romanoff. So, enjoy the fights, guys. UFC 302 should be a lot of fun. Get some good food, good company. Watch some good action. Oh, I also wanted to bring up that the Padres are not doing not too bad. They're on the road again. Um, they did lose two out of three to the New York Yankees, but they were pretty tough. And uh, the Padres couldn't get going until the last game, the third game. Salvaged the series, did not get swept. Uh, but in doing so, they actually ended up being the... Uh, Cincinnati Reds, I think two out of three. Um, also, they beat the Florida Marlins, Miami Marlins, two out of three. Um, Jimmy Estrada became the first ever player in ba Major League Baseball history to strike out 13 consecutive batters. Um, it's nine in one game, but just to face batters. Uh, it's a record to face 13 straight batters and striking them out. Uh, that probably took some time, uh, maybe a uh, maybe a couple weeks. <laughs> but the guy's a strikeout machine. So 13 consecutive strikeouts is like now the new major league record. Jimmy Estrada. I think we have a really nice um, back end of our bullpen. Seven, eight, nine. Um, you got Jimmy Estrada, you got Yuki Matsui, and we got uh, Robert Suarez. So, if the Padres have the lead in the 7th inning, I feel good that our guys in the 7th, 8th, ninth, they will shut it down against whoever's trying to challenge us and will win the game. I feel more confident in our back, in our bullpen now, our relief pitchers, because if our starters can at least get it to the point where they can hold the team down long enough for the offense to pick up and get the lead to the 7, 8, ninth, uh pitchers, we're in a good position. I always feel good about that. Right now, the Padres are playing in Kansas City. I think they're leading 5-3 to three in the 7th inning right now on a Saturday. Um, and they finish out the series with the Royals on Sunday. The... Padres did beat the Royals yesterday. I think it was like um, 11 to 8 or something. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Padres just simply do well against really good teams on the road, especially. I don't know what to say about when they're at home because at home they're more susceptible to lose. Um, so, being at home is like a disadvantage, apparently. So, that's just how the story is about how well they play. And how well they don't play. So, But the Padres, I think they are pretty much tied for second place in the National League West Division with the Giants, who has started to pick things up. The Dodgers, I don't know why they've been losing a lot more games, but they had picked it up against the New York Mets, but then started to fall again. They did lose to the Reds. They did lose to the, uh, the Rockies. So, maybe this is kind of a hiccup, but I don't know, we'll see. Anywho, um, NBA Finals, the finals have been set. The number, I guess the number four seed, the Dallas Mavericks, they're going to uh, represent the Western Conference. They defeated the... LA Clippers in the first round in the 4-5 matchup. Uh, Kawhi Leonard was in 
bad series, but just simply was not healthy enough to make it throughout the whole series. And Dallas Mavericks with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving to uh, just focus, do what they need to do, and they took out the Clippers in the first round. Second round, they got to face the number one seed of the West, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, Dallas Mavericks took care of business, beat them four to two. Uh, that was an amazing game six comeback the Dallas Mavericks had because I, if I remember correctly, the Thunder, I think they were up by 15 in that game six to at least to try to force a game seven. But unfortunately, Dallas Mavericks just kept their plays. And they, Luca and the, and Kyrie, they def- made sure that they defeated and finished off the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Then the Western Conference Finals, big surprise. I actually thought that the Minnesota Timberwolves, who knocked out the defending champions, uh, Denver Nuggets, in the seven games. Um, Came back in Game 7 to finish off the Nuggets in the second round. Um, But I was wrong because the Dallas Mavericks, as the 4 seed, beat the 3 seeded Minnesota Timberwolves 4 games to 1. Dallas Mavericks just, again, kept their composure. Minnesota Timberwolves, they pretty much were just outmatched and um, just simply just couldn't hang with the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I mean, having Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, they do have a great foundation. I mean, he made it to the Final Four like the Lakers did last year, but apparently... Just, uh, just not good enough to beat a team like the Dallas Mavericks. Who I am now going to pick to win the NBA championship because on the other side, Austin Celtics, the number one seed of the East, they got a lucky break in almost every round. The first round, they didn't have to play Jimmy Butler against the Miami Heat in the one-eight matchup. Beat them, I think, four to one. Second round, I believe they defeated the um, the four seeded um, Cleveland Cavaliers four games to one. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, I think he was hurt, so I don't think he would was able to really do anything. And then the third round for the Eastern Conference Championship, um, they defeated the number six seed Indiana Pacers, and Halle Byrne was hurt. In the after um, after the first game, and the Pacers had the Celtics on the ropes in Game One, but then Celtics pulled out the victory and ended up finishing the sweep of the Indiana Pacers because they didn't have Halle Burn anymore. So the star player from each of those three teams were out, and Celtics took advantage. And they made it to the NBA Finals. They've been resting pretty well. I think they've had like eight days off or something. Now, they're going to be facing a Dallas Mavericks team. This could be a good series. I I like to see it. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum going up against Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. But when it comes down to it, I do feel that the Dallas Mavericks will beat the Boston Celtics. Four games to two. They're going to celebrate in Dallas on Dallas's home court. The uh, Dallas Mavericks will hoist another trophy, championship number two. So I look forward to that, and uh, that should be fun, honestly. Um, Stanley Cup, uh, right now they're both in their conference finals. The Florida Panthers are up three games to two on the New York Rangers in the Eastern Conference Championship. Uh, Florida Panthers might be on the verge of winning the series and moving on to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, They're doing pretty well. Uh, On the other side, Edmonton Oilers, they're up three games to two on Dallas Stars. And honestly, I 
think the Oilers are about to finish off the, the Stars. So you could be looking at a Edmonton Oilers, Florida Panthers, Stanley Cup Final 2024. Honestly, that's going to be a very good series. It ends up being that particular final. Um, I can't wait, honestly, and um, can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Um, so yeah, guys, um, that's it for me. Remember to watch UFC 302. Keep tabs on the Sanga Padres and their quest to become World Series champions. Um, they got to pay back the New York Yankees for that series. Um, have a good time watching the NBA Finals, the Stanley Cup Finals, NHL Playoffs, um, a lot of great sports. Now, with the UFL, the United Football League, they're going to enter their 10th and final week of the regular season, and they're going to start playoffs um, next week, 14 playoff, and on June 16th, Father's Day, the United Football League Championship is going to take place, and... Of course, you know, it's the merger between the XFL and the USFL. I can't wait. I'm going to be tuned in for that, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. That should be a very busy um, Father's Day for me because, honestly, that's a lot of... It'll be nice to see the championship between the two leagues in the merger, and um should be a lot of fun. I mean, it's great to have 12 weeks of football to kind of fill the void, and then... You know, we're going to have football again um, starting with training camps in July and then preseason in August. And then we start the season early uh, September. So everything's just around the corner. So, well, guys, um, just remember to watch some good fights tonight, have some good food, have some good company. And, you know, the saying goes, boom, Tiki Maximus signing off. Baby. Alright, later guys. Enjoy your weekend. Talk to you guys very soon.